then my opinion and my professional suggestion as to where a investor who wants to rent it out immediately, not live in it for a year to three years, but rent it out as soon as they buy it, where that individual and that investor should buy. In today's video, where you should buy a investment condominium if you're looking for immediate rental and cash flow returns. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, this is Sam from Siberi6 Real Estate and Remax Real Strong Real Estate Inc. As always, you can find my contact information in the description box with regards to my Gmail, my Instagram, and my office. Feel free to get in touch with me with any questions you have. Lastly, feel free to subscribe, like this video, and comment. Your support is always appreciated. I don't do this full-time, this is a side thing. Uh, I'm a practicing realtor full-time with buyers and sellers. You know, half the days I'm driving around the GTA for buyers, other half the days I'm canvassing for sellers, whatever it may be, I do this on the side. And obviously it's not, my intentions are not always just to inform you, although that is the majority of my intentions. I wanna inform the general public and my clients. However, at the same time, I do wanna market myself as well. So if you happen to enjoy my content and find it informative, feel free to subscribe and support and like this video. If not, don't do any of those things actually. Feel free to dislike, unsubscribe, and leave me a bad comment. I mean, obviously trying to make it constructive, that would be the best case scenario. Nonetheless, let's move on to the topic of today's video. So if you're a investor and looking to buy a condominium in order to rent out the condominium as soon as possible, where should you buy a condo? First, I'm gonna differentiate this form of investor with other forms of investor. Because once you understand the difference, it's gonna actually give you further context as to why my answer is what it is. For simplicity's sake, let's say there are two main categories of investors right now in the Toronto real estate market. There's an investor who's looking to buy a condominium and they're an end user in the short term, but they want it to appreciate greatly and they want to rent it down the line. Now, you can call that individual an end user and they are to a sense, but they also really greatly care about the appreciation of the property and they have the intentions of renting it down the line. Uh, and I'm working with three individuals as of now who fit that portfolio. They want to live in it for a year to three years, but rent it down the line. Past the rental income, these people really care about what they can sell it for maybe five years down the line, maybe six years down the line. For those buyers, for those clients who fit that portfolio, my professional suggestion and my opinion as to where they should buy is different than my opinion and my professional suggestion as to where a investor who wants to rent it out immediately, not live in it for a year to three years, but rent it out as soon as they buy it, where that individual and that investor should buy. The reason it's different is because the investor in the second case, the investor who wants to buy low and rent out their unit uh, and buy with 20% down, for that investor, the rental market is more of an immediate concern than the former investor, the person who wants to live in it for three years and rent it down the line. Furthermore, for that investor, not only is rental income and the rental market more of an immediate concern, but also the appreciation of the property. Because if you're gonna invest not to live in it for even a day, but to rent it out for the entire time, you need to know that your property is also gonna appreciate in terms of its value for sale, because you might need to sell it at some point when you no longer can reap the benefits in terms of the rental income. So we can say this, rental income and immediate appreciation is much more of a concern for the investor who wants to rent their unit out versus the end user who wants to rent it out down the line. Now that we have established that, what is the next step? Well, we have to see which areas of the GTA are rental markets for condominiums the strongest. Let me expand on this a bit because rents are down and the rental market right now is pretty poor for condominiums overall, for freeholds as well, but condominiums especially. However, there's obviously differences, right? Certain areas are down far more as compared to other areas. Thus, for investors who wanna buy for immediate cash flow returns, they are best suited to buy in areas that have been hit the least. Where is that? Well, namely York region. If you're asking me where in York region, well, this is where I have been directing most of my clients to, Richmond Hill. Now, as I said, rents are down all over the board. However, when you compare the drop in rental rates uh, in downtown Toronto or midtown Toronto or Etobicoke or Scarborough, to Richmond Hill, you will see, that yes, Richmond Hill rates have dropped, but compared to year over year or month over month, Richmond Hill rates have dropped 
less than the Toronto counterparts. So you will most likely still face somewhat of a negligible loss. However, if you're assuming you're only putting down 20%, you stand a far better chance at breaking even or losing less than buying, for instance, let's say in downtown Toronto or buying in Scarborough. So in summary, if you are a Toronto real estate investor who is looking to purchase a condominium for immediate cash flow and rental income returns, stay out of Toronto, stay out of central Toronto, eastern Toronto, western Toronto, uh, and move towards York region because that's where we see rental rates holding up the best.